Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Absolutely fantastic having you join us tonight. Absolute honor, absolute privilege, and I'm so happy to be back. You know, it's it's been a few weeks we have been away, but um, I'm back now, and it's nice to to be alive on the show. And tonight I have a special guest. Um, they're special all the time, aren't they? But tonight I'm sitting with a Zimbabwe rugby player. I'm sitting with a Sharks provincial rugby player. How fantastic is that? Tino, how are you doing? <laughs> no, I'm good, thanks, my brother. I can't complain at all, man. How are you? No, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. You know, when I, when I look at guys like you, I start to realize how small I am because your arm is probably as big as my thigh. <laughs> uh, not even, eh? not even. I think it's, it's the camera and it's just edifying, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, look, it's it's half an hour where we get to chat to you, and there's there's quite a lot of people who've been keen and have been wanting to hear from you to hear how how you've been, how your journey's gone. And I've had a few questions come through already that people want to ask you. But look, I want to go there because we've got very little time to chat here on yeah. air. Um, and look, here you are. We we're referring to you as a sharks player. And now, now tell me, how does it feel to wake up and realize you're a sharks player? Yeah, you know, it, it, it feels great, um, but uh, it, it's more pleasant when, when it's something that you've been working towards, you know, and, um, and I can't really say it's a dream come true, um, because you dream when you're sleeping, but uh, it's, it's more of a goal come true, eh? because, um, you know, over the years, you know, it's, it's just been uh, something that I've been working towards, and, and yeah, yeah, I am. Eh? But um, also, it's it's something that you know came as a surprise, you know, because I I didn't really think that you know a, a, a big union like Sharks, you know, was you know was gonna approach me. But I just thought maybe you know a smaller union. But uh, well, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah? Like every time, I just you know think and 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 like realize how big this is, you know. Uh, yeah, I, mean, it's, <laughs> I can't really describe, you know, but it's just, it's just one of those feelings. Where, yeah. I can hear just the excitement and the buzz, just, just sitting here listening to you and how it felt. And you, you know what, you say it's, it's a dream come true, but did, did, you, did you ever dream it? Did you ever think, you know what, I'm going to wake up one day and I'll be playing for the Sharks? Um, I actually said it's a goal come true. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I remember I spoke to my friend Godfrey the other time, and then I told him like it's so rare uh, that I I I, uh, I dream myself playing rugby. I, like it's 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 so rare, and I can actually count the number of times I have dreamed myself playing rugby that I can remember. Um, so it's quite <laughs> it's quite. Funny, eh? but you know that's that's true. So um, I really haven't dreamed myself yeah, but I've you know I've sort of you know visualized myself yeah. Um, like it's you know it's every uh, rugby player's goal you know to you know to be somewhere. Um, so I've always visualized myself you know um, um, being at a professional level, but um, it it really wasn't the way. Yeah, it really wasn't that that way it turned out to be, but uh, definitely, man, I, I have visualized myself, you know, yeah, and here I am. <laughs> Fantastic. It, it's amazing, and it, it's, it's so inspiring, you know, and for any young person watching this video, um, be it from Zimbabwe, be it from South Africa, it just shows how everything is possible and how, you know, like you said, it's a goal that you set out for yourself to be in professional rugby. And here you are today. But look, we are jumping the gun. You know, we're telling the story right at the end. Let, let's talk about how did it begin for you? You know, when when did rugby become a thing for you? So um, I I started playing rugby in primary school, eh? and um, and uh, I really loved rugby. But um, that was from grade three up until grade six. But uh, unfortunately, I didn't continue then because I had to transfer to go to another school. And unfortunately, they 
they didn't offer rugby as you know as like one of their sporting disciplines there. So um, uh, it's something that was always in me, and um, I recall my primary uh, much school this is my primary coach always calling me you know you're a superstar you're a superstar but I really didn't see it eh? um then fortunately in high school I then went to Churchill boys um from there onwards man that that's why I saw that you know you know I can become something eh? because you know church is one of the top schools back in Zim and um and the, the journey really began at Churchill um like in my in my what call this my my lower um uh, my lower levels of rugby which were under 14 15 16 i wasn't really you know one of the best um i recall like i was actually one of the slowest forward eh? um this is a fact under under 14 15 16 17 like i was like one of the slowest forwards like um the person that would come uh behind me was a prop uh, these are facts. These are facts. But um, in in my in lower six, uh, that's when I started to get like you know personal uh, training with Coach Bob and Coach Jeff, and they really looked at me specifically. You know what what are my strengths, and um, and from there onwards, you know I started to work towards that. So I became much stronger, much faster, and. Um, and I didn't even make any any provincial sides uh, in in high school. I didn't make any national sides in in high school. So I was I was still more for you know a developing player. You know, so I wasn't part of the, the elite then. But um, I just you know I just kept on pushing. And um, in my last year of high school, that's when things really began to change. That's when I started to actually make a name for myself. Um, this was uh, with Pitbulls. Um, I don't know if you know Pitbulls. It's a it's an under 21 club back home. So since I was right. um, about 19 years old, um, I was 18, I think. I'm, I'm not just sure. Um, I could actually play for Pitbulls even though I was still in high school. So that season was my breakthrough season. Became, uh, what you call this? Um, uh, player, uh, most valuable player, best forward. Um, but I really, you know, thank the coaches that uh, actually looked at where I can develop specifically, you know, and um, and I developed them. But it wasn't, uh, you know, a, a smooth uh, a smooth ride because I didn't have, you know, a lot of things that I could work with: the uh, gym, supplements, you know, proper food was at home, you know, it's sad uh, saying my scared my name you check. So, <laughs> you know, there was <laughs> but I had to, you know, I had to work with what I had, you know. Um then um after high school, um that was the first time I represented um Zimbabwe under 20. That was 2018. We went for a tournament in um in Namibia, but that was after I also had a fantastic uh, under 21 season. Um, the one that I mentioned when I was still in high school, then yeah, that's when it, you know, it all happened. Then I came back from the under 20s, uh, came back into the local league under 21. Uh, uh, I, I, I kept in the side, uh, we won the, you know, the under 21 league. You know, I was the best player in, in, in like all the awards. Um, then I remember Harare Sports Club then had a lot of players with the Sables. So they wanted, you know, some players to come in. So then they selected me, you know, from pitbulls and and um, I, I joined Harare Sports Club when, you know, when the, when the league was like halfway there. Then um, that was a great ride. I, I actually uh, performed well. I actually became, you know, the best forward and and you know and the player of the year there. So then that was my first um, my first time playing men's rugby in Zim. Then from there onwards, I was now eyeing for Sables. And um, later that year, I then played some sevens. Then uh, and then I saw that wow, you know, I can you know, I can actually play sevens. Um, uh, I went with Goshocks at, 
was it yeah there was a tournament in Zambia um I went there I was actually you know the top try scorer as in 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 Zim um that was a good tournament so from there on it was, it was just going high high um then later that year um I also played you know local servants but there wasn't anything much but it's like you know everything was now crushing man you know like um I I'd, I'd achieved almost everything locally you know and and yeah man now I just wanted something back something to happen but um from the owners that when I made sables um same academy then <laughs> wow uh, you you you've had quite the journey you've had quite the journey and yeah, along the way yeah. scooping up all these prizes and no surprise you've ended up where you are and you, you talk about winning prizes you know you were the best forward the forward that rocks in the recent varsity cup rugby tournament that was held and you know that that, that is no surprise to anyone and in saying that you know i know you mentioned quite a bit when we spoke now but i, I want to jog you back to one particular point that you mentioned you know you spoke about uh, some of your coaches who helped you through and who who guided you at a very crucial time how much of a difference do they make i think you said it was coach bob and coach sean if i'm not mistaken how much of a difference did those people make in your rugby career um it you know it certainly was a huge difference because these are people that took me you know uh, when i was still in form 1 um they knew me personally and um they knew you know what i could become um so they did their best to bring the best out of me and um it took long but um i really thank them because you know I, they they gave me the motivation um they gave me the the mindset uh because you know it i didn't realize that you know it's all about mindset um i was in the most talented but um you know those one on ones that that i had and also you know the chats that would had uh, um i remember when i got an injury 2017 um you know they would come personally you know to my to my to my room and you know would chat so i can say that they really did they really played a crucial role because as people who knew me personally and who also loved me who also um so me as their son because surely they were you know my father figures um they they crafted something that suited me personally so yeah that's you know that's the role that they really played that's amazing yeah. absolutely fantastic to hear and to have people like that in any player's career fundamental and for you to have gone through that 100%. and as as you've mentioned you know uh coming from zim and coming from the background you came from you've played your way through all the age groups you've not played any age group sides which again is, is something to take note of for any young person watching you don't need yeah. to play provincial or national junior sides to determine whether or not you're going to be a pro and you're a typical example yeah. of that you know you've gone on you've blossomed yeah. and now you know i know i can see our time is ticking it's going so fast but now for you to get to the sharks you've you've spent a stint at the university of western cape now yeah. tell me how was your stay with the university of western cape and what did that do for you as a player transitioning from playing rugby in zimbabwe and coming through and now playing varsity cup rugby here in south africa so um i saw, i saw it as, as an opportunity um i was i was hungry to be honest and and i would i was at that point where um i would ask myself you know look um i'm i'm brushing shoulders with you know with provincial players you know like lao hendrix um like um the likes of adi you know and and i would see that uh, you know you know uh senior rugby is just a step away from me you know like i was playing against um you know the nama cabas i was playing you know i was playing against with you know people who are actually um at that level so in a way i i developed a mindset way you know i I, I told myself look you can be at that level you know because i always compared myself you know with you know with those people that i was playing with and 
and with the tools that the university provided, you know, the gym, the you know, the supplements, you know, uh, the field facilities, you know, even like the uh, you know the special coaching itself, you know, um, it was a different level from from you know the other one I experienced back home. But um, I can say I got the tools from Sim, but um, uh, the university just gave me you know a greater platform, and um, it wasn't that um, there was something special about the platform, but you know it was just the mindset you know to use you know the platform and the tools that you know the university gave gave me and you know i i just thank god that you know he really made me work hard and and uh i just made use of the coaches made use of the you know of you know of, of the everything that you know the university gave us you know the gym you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah it was really you know it was really a great stepping stone i can say yeah that's fantastic to hear and you know for, for for someone who's gone on now got on a contract at the sharks into professional rugby fully fledged where where does that now leave your studies that you were busy with at the university of western cape so um regarding my studies um you know as a professional um rugby player like any other person you know um it's full time so basically, I can say that's like three quarters of your of your day. Um, obviously, the studies, if it's full time, they'll also, you know, ask, you know, the majority time of your day, I can say. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, I made a point where um, you know, I'm looking at my schedule and, um, and I'm looking at my studies and seeing how, you know, I can, you know, I can continue, like how I can, you know, um, I can also give, you know, 100% here yeah, and also give 100% there. So uh, I'm looking towards, you know, doing part-time because um, personally, you know, in the few months that I've, you know, that I've continued with my studies, I've, you know, I've seen how, how really tough it is, how really, you know, uh, mentally draining it is because you might sleep around one, two, you know, just finishing off your studies and, Tomorrow morning, you know, you're back on the field, you know, you've got like a three, four meetings, you know, so you really want to be at a space where you can actually execute in the, uh, in the rugby field, you know. Um, so but the studies should continue because, um, you know, there's life after rugby, you know, there's life during rugby. So we can't take, we can't um, push that away from the picture, but um, it's just, uh, you finding a balance, you know, between, you know, the, the two and like, obviously, you know, and let the main thing, you know, be the main thing, but um, also uh, you have to have considerations, you know, like, okay, what can happen? Because I've experienced in high school where, you know, I was, like I said, I was, I was, I was on top, you know, then I just had a fracture, double fracture in my leg. And, and I saw that, wow, you know, like we can just stop anytime so i had to you know be serious with my studies at least it didn't come later on in the year because i was playing with my studies i don't want to lie so it's a it's a it's a it's a move i've seen before so yeah i just have to concentrate both sides and and find a good balance yeah yeah wow look um it, it's tough enough just being a full-on professional athlete, but for you to be able to juggle your studies as well is absolutely fantastic. And it's it's great to see that, you know, you've got that going as well and you've got that plan, not, not only just there as, as a fallback, but for something to use later in the future if need be. And that can definitely tie in with, with your rugby. And, you know, yeah. that brings me to the conversation whereby, again, as Africa Sports Consultancy, that's something we certainly do advocate for and the conversations, I know we've had some of our team reach out to you and have those sort of conversations with you, yeah. which, which is absolutely, you know, which is great, which is great to hear. And hopefully it'll be good to see you go all the way through. And in me saying that, you know, we, we talk about, you know, in, in high school, you've come through, you've gone to varsity. Now you're at the Sharks. 
And yeah. I actually saw a picture, someone tagged me in a picture when I posted um, about this conversation. They tagged me in a picture whereby you were in that picture and you were with Beast in that picture. Beast who's now gone on and played for South Africa, also been at the Sharks. And I must say at that point, my arms were a bit bigger than yours. So I, I'll take <laughs> one up off you there. But you know, to um, now find yourself at this point yeah. that you're at now, it must be like surreal. Yes, um, you know, I really remember that day. Um, you know, it was a raining day, and and I saw Beast, you know, um, at you know at the place we were, and and I remember in high school my nickname was Beast. Um, you know, the driller came after high school, or like in my late um, high school uh, uh, years, but Beast was my you know was my name because you know I really looked up to Beast. Um, um, so I really ran and, you know, I, you know, I just had, um, a, a picture with him, you know, like I couldn't really, you know, make a conversation with, but, um, I remember at that point, um, it was all just dreams, you know, it was all just dreams. And I really didn't, you know, think that, you know, someday I would be, you know, in the position that Beast was, but, um, yeah, I really remember that day, you know, I was, I was still in the trenches there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, fantastic. It's I, I, I'm glad to hear you say that and to say that, like you mentioned, you're you are a work in progress. We've got quite a few people watching this live as well. And at this point, feel free to pop in your messages in the chat box. You can put them on the Zoom chat or wherever I can get to see them. And I can definitely ask Tino. You know, we we do have a quick pop quiz for you. Don't worry, nothing hectic. But in, in you saying that, to say yes, you're a work in progress and you're in a place now where Beast was quite a few years ago. Now, is there pressure on you, having now gone to the Sharks, having been that player who blew the Varsity Cup away, is there pressure on you, and how are you handling that pressure? Def uh, definitely, there's always pressure, but um, I mean, look, we are paid, you know, to, to, to handle this pressure, and so it's, it's all about channeling the pressure, it's all about um, um, turning the pressure, you know, um, into positivity. And um, I can say that um, I made a stage where, you know, I have to develop, you know, um, because this is a, a new level and obviously you have to twitch, you know, some, you know, some things here and there. Not only that, um, you are in a setup where they are like 13 loose forwards and at the end of the day, only three or four are needed. And, um, and it's you know it's all about contesting and it's all about improving and the good thing about it is you know everyone is hungry and you know the hungrier you are you know and uh, and and uh, we've got watch all this all this professional setup you know here yeah, you've got everything you need you know there's there's nothing that you lack like. um, all you need is just your hard work all you need is just you know that that work ethic and um, and definitely, you know, you have to improve, you know, you have to be better than the other person, you know, you have to show that you can um, do the job so that, you know, um, the coach can pick you, you know, you have to raise up your hand and, and that pressure is there because I'm here to play, you know, I'm not here to, you know what I mean, but I have to make sure that I'm, I'm in a position where um, I'm able to play and that's, that's what has been happening for the few months, you know, I'm, I have my work clothes that I have and I'm actually, you know, working towards them, you know, working towards those goals, working towards those those areas, you know, day in, day out, so that, you know, in the in the next couple of months, you know, I'm in a position where I can compete at this level. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's it's great to hear that. And we we can't wait to 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 tune in our screens to be watching you on Supersport again after we saw you do absolute damage as the driller in the varsity <laughs> cup. Um, so we're definitely looking forward to that. Uh, I've got a few questions here, but before we do that, we thought we'd change things up a little bit. We have got just five quick pop questions and you just need to sure. answer them very quickly. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you um, anything weird. So you don't need to be nervous, okay. but just really sure. quick, quick answers. I shoot and you shoot back. How about that? 100%. Okay, so what, what what is your favorite food? Um, peanut butter rice and and uh, what's this? 
uh, Oxfit, eh? Is it o Oxtail? Oxtail, sorry. Oxtail, okay. Uh, your favorite rugby player? Uh, was Scott Berg. And now is? Um, I shot myself, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, I stalk myself eh, in the you know in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Now, uh, what's your shoe size? Size twelve and a half. <laughs> you had to throw that off in there. Um, who, who, who's the messiest teammate that you've ever played with? Uh, the messiest is is Nigel Tinabo. Um, I played with him under 20s, in my under 20s, and uh, I've never come across him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he, he's going to be impressed. And last one is, what is your post-game meal of choice? Post-game meal? Uh, there isn't anything specific, eh, because every time there's different food, but um, I, would, you know, I would really go for tuna sandwich eh? yeah, because I don't really like to eat before games um, because I usually get stomach cramps eh? so that's you know that's something that I ate when I was providing my own you know um, lunch before a game but now you know food is provided so it, it, it can be anything but yeah a tuna sandwich I see what you did there you know that the nutritional trainer is watching this somewhere and you've just said the right thing. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to you there. Now, Tino, you, you, you've you come from a place whereby you've, you've inspired. You've come from Zim, all against the odds. You're now at the Sharks. Now, what message would you have for the young, aspiring rugby players, young boys and girls who are going to watch this or come across this video at some point? So, um, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying... I, I can't really tell them the way to go because you know we all have different, um, like we are all in different circumstances and all. But I can I can you know give advice like you're saying. So they shouldn't take it like you know the exact way to go. But um, um, I can say you know you have to um, uh, set your goals um, and you know and just and just work hard towards them you know and um, and it's gonna be tough but. Uh, each and every single day, you know, it'll, you know, like there is going to be, what you call this, um, um, uh, setbacks, uh, they're going to be uh, hardship, but um, you just have to keep going, you know, just trust the process because everyone is looking for, you know, a magic trick, you know, like, okay, what did you do to get there? But it's, you know, it's, you know, the, you know, the thing's just the same hard work in each and every circumstances that each and every person is in, you know, and, and like, you know, above all that I know really works, you know, is, you know, always, you know, ask God for guidance, you know, and always put, you know, the Lord first in, in everything that you do, you know, because, you know, he, he knows better. So there isn't any secret thing, but, you know, it's just hard work and dedication, you know, and, and that it, it just shouldn't be, you know, um, hard work but you know it has to be perfect hard work you know what I mean because practice doesn't make perfect but perfect practice you know makes perfect so yeah that's that's what I have to say for anyone coming across this wow wise words they're coming from Tino the driller I, I love that name the driller you know <laughs> um you've, you, you've come through you've come quite a way and Interestingly enough, you know, you mentioned about you setting goals and I'll definitely attest to how you do set your goals. Because I remember when Africa Sports Consultancy started last year, you were one of the few people who, who trusted us, who signed up, who went through your goals and you had them out in front of you and you were impressed with that. So just a quick check in while I have you here on air. How far are you with those goals? Um... Sorry, can I just grab a, something? Sorry, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, no worries. Tino just had to, to step away here quickly. I think I might have upset him um, by telling him about the goals. But yeah, he, he just popped away. Tino, uh, I, I see you are back. Yeah. 
Sorry, my phone was. Yeah, so um, where I am so far, um, um, I can't really say I have accomplished much, but um, I can say only two goals I have, you know, have come through. Now. Only two. Like, do you want me to say them or? No, you, you don't have to say them. We, right, yeah. we don't want you to say them because then we, we're definitely going to hold you accountable and the whole world's going to hold you accountable, but definitely <laughs> trusting you to hold yourself accountable. Um, <laughs> those goals yeah. that you, you did set and, you know, for you to have come on and really appreciate that you came onto our platform, you set yeah. your goals there and, you know, you also did have feedback around that. So great, great, great to see and great yeah. to have you on board. Um, with yes. processes like Can that. I just add something on that? Yeah, please, um, if you don't mind. Like, I really learned something, you know, from your, from the, from the, watch for this, the, the, like the way you did, it. exactly. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, I found out that, you know, like there isn't any other trick also, you know, like, you know what you want, you know, so it's, it's something that just reveals that, you know, you are capable of doing it, you know, like, because I remember when I, when I started it, I thought that, you know, I was like, there's a formula that's going to come out and, you know, that's going to take me here and there. But at the end of the day, I had the answers, you know, like I wrote the answers and then I was like, but look, <laughs> I know what to do, you know, and then, yeah, I, I just did it. But, um, you know, it's, it's really helpful. Yeah because you have the answers, you know, you have the keys, you know what I mean, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you, you heard it here first from Tino. Tino's mentioned that you have the answers, you have the keys, you just have to go out there and unlock your own potential. And, you know, Tino, we, we have run out of time. I, I do have questions here, which I thought I would get in, but we've sadly run out of time. And I don't know if you have any closing thoughts and if you can also just let us know what, what we can expect from you in the near future. Um, well, I, I can't really say much, but, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, have, have been looking forward, you know, to me playing here yeah, and I can, I can just say, you know, thank you, you know, for all the support that, you know, um, the, you know, that everyone has been um, giving me ever since, you know, I, you know, I started you know, playing rugby and uh, here I am. And um, even during the vast cup time, you know, um, I really didn't get time, you know, to to then, you know, um, thank people publicly, but um, I really thank everyone for, you know, for the effort that, you know, it did, you know, the voting and everything. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, in the future, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to play and, you know, and entertain, um, you know, the, the supporters, because, you know, that's, that's what we do, you know, we are entertainers, you know, so, so I'm just looking forward to giving you, you know, good entertainment when, you know, my time arrives. Yeah. Well, Tino, thank you very much. You definitely provide us, provided us entertainment here tonight. And um, <laughs> thanks for your time. And thanks for actually just speaking to us, you know, um, you so as a sh when you make your Sharks debut, we are hoping, well, your full Sharks debut, we're hoping that you're going to come back, have another conversation with us, let us know how it went. And you've definitely got supporters in us and in a lot of people back home in Zimbabwe, I know, certainly there's lots of support there. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. It's been great having you on board. And please do go, go away, do check us out on our website. I've got it written across me here, www.africasportsconsultancy.com. See what we're about and see what you can take out from there. But from my side, it's been great chatting. And I ask that please, please look after yourselves. COVID is still out there. Get your jabs, sanitize your hands, keep your masks on. And until next time, it's good night and goodbye. Bye, Bye guys.